look, I am just so sorry. I, I, I shouldn't have said any of it. it I, I didn't mean it at all. And, and I understand you're giving me the silent treatment, and, and I totally deserve that right now. Well, you know what? The Hyper 212 Evo is better anyways. Ugh! Okay, all bad acting aside, I owe the Wraith Stealth Cooler that shipped with the Ryzen 3 processors as well as the Ryzen 5 1400 a big fat whopping apology. In a recent video, I said that you probably shouldn't be buying the Ryzen 3 processors, not because they are bad processors, because I actually think they're very good processors. My problem I had with the lineup was that for the cost, there were better options for gamers, and if you were um, into productivity, then um, the Ryzen 3 processors aren't really for you, and you'd probably be better off spending a little bit of extra money to get like something like a Ryzen 5 1400 instead of one of the Ryzen 3 processors. In a nutshell, that argument came down to there being just better overall options for most use cases in the price neighborhood to the Ryzen 3 processors, both on the cheaper side and on the slightly more expensive side for a lot more performance. However, one of the things I said in that video, and it was in reference to a Gamers Nexus uh, video where they reviewed the Ryzen 3 1300X and found that the Wraith Stealth Cooler was really not that good of a cooler at all. In fact, they said you'd probably be better off just tossing it and picking up some sort of third party cooler. Um, and I cited that as saying that you probably wouldn't be able to overclock all that well on the stock cooler of the Ryzen 3 processors and you'd have to invest more money into something else anyways so the real price tag of the processor even if you're getting the 1200 goes from 110 dollars instantly to more like at least 130 dollars and for a really solid cooler more like 140 dollars including something like a, a hyper 212 evo as it turns out my own brother betrayed my recommendations of getting something like one of the pinion processors or a ryzen 5 1400 and instead went with the ryzen 3 1200 with hopes of overclocking it to in his own words 4.0 gigahertz, although he said he would be happy with 3.8 gigahertz. Now bear in mind that this was all supposed to be done on the stock Wraith Stealth Cooler, which I was very apprehensive of because I know temperatures can get pretty out of hand with some of the high-end Ryzen chips if you don't replace the cooler with something a little bit beefier. So after putting the system together, and by the way, there will be a build vlog of that coming up in the relatively near future, he took his PC home and ran some benchmarks for me, and he came up with some actually very surprising and very encouraging numbers for the Wraith Stealth Cooler. So admittedly, my brother's apartment does tend to be a little bit on the cooler side of things, so your temperatures may end up being a little bit higher if you try a very similar setup to his uh, Ryzen 3 build, but he was running a stress test running at 3.84 gigahertz on all four cores at 1.4 volts and seeing temperatures of 49 or 50 degrees depending on the second. It apparently was bouncing between 49 and 50 degrees. In addition, he was planning on bumping up his uh, overclock to 3.89 gigahertz to see just what would happen with that, but at 3.84 gigahertz and running at just 49 or 50 degrees, this processor and actually cooler combo is a super great value. And by the way, that stress test he ran overnight, so it got a solid six or seven hours of stress testing and was still only maxing out at 49 or 50 degrees. Again, admittedly a colder apartment than most people would keep their apartments, but even if it's five degrees cooler than your apartment's gonna be, for that five degrees is not gonna result in a humongous difference at the end of the day. And his results actually lead me to give a completely different recommendation than I expected to give when I tasked him with taking his processor home and overclocking it as well as stress testing it. And that recommendation is simply if you are getting a Ryzen 3 1200, and by the way, if you're getting a Ryzen 3 processor, that's the one you should go for because the 1300X doesn't actually offer you anything extra in the feature set. And with an overclock, it'll basically give you nearly identical performance anyways. I'd recommend just slapping your Ryzen 3 1200 into your system and providing that your case gives you decent airflow, just sticking with a Wraith Stealth cooler and um, getting whatever overclock you can with it and calling it a day. Because at the end of the day, the Ryzen 3 chips are still a very budget option. And 
adding 20 or $30 to the cost is actually a very large percentage of the overall platform cost that you're getting with Ryzen 3. That being said, even at 3.9 gigahertz, I still think there are better options in the neighborhood of the Ryzen 3 processors that don't make it the uh, end all be all value. If you wanna go out and buy a Ryzen 3 processor, it will serve you very well, don't get me wrong. I just think there are better options in its price neighborhood for most use cases, whether it be gaming, productivity, whatever the case may be, I think there are better options than Ryzen 3, even with a really solid overclock. But it's definitely not a bad option by any means. And if you're a fan of Team Red, then by all means support Team Red and uh, go ahead and get a Ryzen 3 chip. So to the Wraith Stealth Cooler, I am sorry. I made my conclusions based on the hands-on experiences of Gamers Nexus, which I is a great hardware review uh, source. However, I'm not really sure exactly what they might have been doing differently that led them to get some very mediocre, in their own words, uh, really bad temperatures. Uh, from the stealth cooler. I will say the one thing that me and my brother did tweak that may have made an impact was we replaced the uh, stock thermal paste that comes pre-applied to the Wraith stealth cooler and added our own, uh, it was just Cooler Master off the shelf thermal paste. It was nothing special, but if you have different thermal paste laying around that you very much trust, you may wanna try that instead of the Wraith stealth stock thermal paste because that may have made all the difference in the world. I really don't know if uh, if I was being really smart, I in hindsight probably should have had him test it with the stock thermal paste and then replace it and that, that probably would have been a good idea, but you know, we didn't do that. So hopefully in the near future, I will be bringing you some more Ryzen 3 1200 content. It is my brother's PC, so it is up to him to sort of run benchmarks and get me some of those statistics as I need them. So we'll see how that goes. But again, the build vlog for that PC is coming down the road. So let me know in the comments down below, knowing that the thermals of the Wraith Stealth Cooler are really solid, does that make you lean a little bit more towards the Ryzen 3 processors or will you still shy away from them and go for one of the uh, quad thread Pentium processors? An i3 or maybe one of the Ryzen 5 like the 1400 for a little bit extra money? Let me know in the comments down below. Also, if you like this content, give me a like, share, subscribe, and comment. Those things are all helpful to me and the channel. You can follow me on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. They are the same tag for your convenience. And as always, we'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.